Barbaco Liqueur, a podcast network. Uh, what is up, everybody? Thank you for checking out the uh, Pat Out of Hell podcast, uh, the daytime edition. Uh, the sun's still out. I wanted to get this done before I get too deep in my my Sunday beers, because um, I'm, I'm I'm pretty deep as it is. I just realized right now, before I was sitting down, that I haven't eaten uh, at all today, and I know you're calling bullshit, uh, but I just I haven't. Uh, I woke up. I, I took some, took care of some things around the, the, the apartment. Took the dog out for an early walk. I had, I have to come out early because I feel bad. I saw this thing about like, like uh, the pavement being like a hundred degrees hotter than what it is outside, and it's really fucking up the dog's paws and all that stuff. So I tried. I got up as early as I can. Uh, to take him out before it gets really hot and stuff. He doesn't seem to care. I don't think he cares. He also wouldn't wear shoes either. Uh, or not, uh, as a dog shoes. I don't know if it's dog shoes or socks or, or whatever the fuck. I, I, anyway. Uh, so I've been going pretty early. Uh, truth be told, it's 3.42 p.m. Uh, right now. And I'm like four beers in. And I haven't eaten anything today. So I was like, you need to record something so you get it out on Monday, like you promised. Uh, so here we go, man. Uh, show dates. Uh, May 21st, Cutting Up Live at the Shop. That's 9 p.m. at the uh, Razor House. Uh, May 25th, that's the uh, Stand Up Showdown. Uh, that's the finals for the, uh, the competition over at Silver Spoon. Uh, May 25th, 7 p.m. in New Braunfels show up uh may 27th fantastic damage at the blind tiger county club that's at 8 p.m tickets are already moving so get your tickets now man i don't know if you've ever been to the blind tiger i love it but it's a small spot i'm saying 75 max i don't like to put more than like 50 people 60 people in there um so yeah tickets are moving so if you want to get on it get on it uh venmo cash app you know the deal follow uh get the information on the social medias and whatnots uh may 28th grapes of laugh uh in cristobal vineyards 7 p.m in cristobal cristobal texas uh it's gonna be with me and, and uh jeremy brown and chris crawford uh over in uh cristobal cristobal vineyards and that's it for may man uh what's today today's the the fifteenth, and I don't have nothing going on until the twenty-first. Kind of bummed out about that, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, we're doing what we're doing, and all that good stuff. So uh, notes, I got, I got your notes uh, again. Uh, get get tickets for the fantastic damage. We've already sold uh, ten ten spots, um, and again, I'm, I'm, it's limited to like fifty. I didn't do the chair count. I should have done the chair count before I did this, but we're at like. We got like like ten. We got like ten spots, uh, ten uh, seats sold, and I know San Antonio. How San Antonio does are like day of, uh, which I get, man. I get that. I'm a day of, all the time, all day, every day, day of, for the most part, and uh, uh, but people been hitting me up for 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 tickets. So I already got I already got ten seats sold. So I I at least know that we'll have a ten person audience for the fantastic damage on May twenty seventh. Uh, what's the lineup? Let me get the lineup. It's it's a fire one. I'm stoked about this one. I'm, uh, so yeah. So May twenty seventh. Uh, I got uh, I'm hosting it. Obviously, you'll see me there. Come see your boy. Uh, Brian Powell, Dallas Van, Tori Poole, Tony Casillas, Andrew Wagner. It's got to be a fucking great show, dude. Great show. Um, stoked for this. Um, so, yeah, come out, dude. Look it up. Get the information. Come out. Let's hang. Let's party. 8 p.m. It's an 8 p.m. show. 
So make sure you get there on time. Uh, I I would hate to start without you, but I'm known to start without you. You know, I do what I do when I got to do what I do. Uh, so let's talk about this week, dude. Uh, pretty stoked. I am not gonna lie. I'm not a huge fan of uh comedy competitions. Uh, don't like them. I still do them. Uh, cause I'm a hoe for show. You know. Uh, if you got a spot, I'll do a spot. You know, don't get it twisted. I'll show up. If it's a competition, so be it. Let's compete. Let's go at it. Uh, wound up getting round, uh, runner up on that one. Uh, which which uh, I was surprised, dude. I was surprised because uh, I didn't know anybody in the audience. I took the wife. Uh, I love when the wife tags along because uh, she she doesn't get to see me do what I do live. You know, we talk about it a lot. Um. Uh, we talk about the shows after the fact, you know, I'll play her clips, I'll show her videos and all that stuff. Uh, but I didn't get to, she she finally got to come out to, to see me live because I was like, if anything, I'm getting one vote, hopefully. Uh, and then it just so happened that there was a, a dinner party, a birthday party, whatever, that just, that went to that spot for dinner and then they found out about the show and they're like, yeah, fuck yeah, we'll stick around for the show. So it was all complete strangers, I think, for the most part. For me, I didn't know them. Um, and it's nice when, uh, when, and it's a voting system. Com- competitions are easy voting systems. Usually it's, a, it's a, you know, whoever brings out the most people. It is what it is, whatever. Um, but yeah, man, got runner up on that. And I was like, damn, dude, uh, these, these people like me. These strangers that I've never met before in my life fucking dug what I did when I do what I do. So that was nice, man. Uh, runner up. I got the uh, we got the finals on the 25th uh, over at uh, uh, Silver Spoon. And I'm OK if I lose that one. Um, I'm OK. I'm good. You know, would it be nice? Sure. Am I going to use it as a credit? Of course I will. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it get me down. Speaking of not, not getting down, uh, or get knocked down and get back up again, Chumbawamba, shout out. Uh, I got my second uh, comedy festival rejection. What's up? Yeah, dude, uh, and I really wanted in on this one, you know, but um, they didn't pick me, and I, and I kind of know why. I mean, the, the tape that I have, I don't have a very strong tape. Uh, it, it looks good. It sounds good, but I was too in my head about, like, uh, the camera being on, and uh, I was also the, I, I was the first one up on that show, so it was a cold crowd. I'm not blaming them. It's me for sure, but uh, yeah, it, it just the, the tape that I'm sending out to to these festivals, it's not the strongest, and uh, and it shows because they're not they're not picking me up. It's good enough to get, to get booked, you know. I got shows in Austin next month, uh, just based off the the clip that I'm sending out, uh, which is the same clip that I'm sending out for to festivals. But uh, it is what it is, what it is. But yeah, dude, I was a little bit down about that. Uh, I think I got one more. Well, I got a, a few. Like, if it's free, if it's, if it's a free application, I'm, like, submitting. And I'm just like, take me or leave me. It's fine. But it it only it only hurts when I have to pay for it. And I think I got two more that I've paid for. I'm trying. I'm waiting to find out about that. And then I need to, um, I need to, I need to get a new tape. I need to figure out, I need to get a strong tape. And, uh, yeah, dude. But this showbiz thing that I'm in is real. The rejection part of it is real so far, and uh, it's it's a, it's a numbers game, and I'm doing what I gotta do to um, to be a part of it. You know, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Like, it's so. Oh look, okay. This is the Pat Out of Hell podcast, and uh, I didn't. I'm not here to burn bridges, but. Uh, I, I'm probably gonna 
And look, before I go on, before I say anything, anybody that goes on stage, anybody that goes on stage, everybody that goes on stage doing this thing that we do, I have so much respect for them. If you sign up, if you show up, if you sign up, if you write, if you go up and you do your thing, whatever it is, if you do any of that, all of that, I you have my respect. Do I like what everybody does? No. But it's not for me to like. It's for the audience to like. And the audience, you know, they, they like that stuff. But the audience also doesn't get it. You know, the, the audience is fine with being told... Uh, uh, repeated memes that they've seen online. They like the familiarity of it. Uh, so they don't mind if they, they if a comic goes up there and just spits out the same shit that's been on a meme that's everywhere. They're like, oh yeah, I've heard this joke before. Yeah, it's cool. You know, I know uh, there's bookers and, 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 and bars and, and whatever they didn't care uh, if the joke was original. They don't care if the joke is, you know, uh, your your joke. All they care about is, 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 are my customers laughing? Are my customers drinking? Are my customers eating? That's all they care about. And I get it. You're a business. But, uh, and it's stupid to say, like, there should be some integrity behind it. I mean, I'm up there. I'm doing dick jokes fart jokes uh if i mean i mean that's that's what my that's my thing that's what i do <clears throat> you know but uh also i think the, you, there should be some type of some type of integrity on it you know like there's a new comic i didn't want to talk about this but it keeps coming up and uh and i'm gonna again i'm not here to burn bridges but i burn bridges stay warm whatever the fuck uh, there's this comic that um does a very similar, uses the same words wording of a joke that I that I've been doing for months. It's been my opener for months. Uh, it's a throwaway joke. It's stupid, you know, whatever. And uh, it's a play on words. That's all it is. And uh, and uh, this guy did it. And this guy is like two months in, if that. And I've seen this guy around. I've never seen him go up. And the one time, the first time that I saw him on stage, he did a joke that is very similar to something that I do. And uh, didn't think nothing of it. Wasn't going to call him out on it. Again, it's, it's a stupid, it's a small little thing. It's not like he took, me, uh, took a whole premise from me and you know, all that stuff. It was just this one little play on words type of joke. And uh, one night I called him out on it, sort of. I did, the way I did it, I'll, I'll admit this, the way I did it was wrong. Uh, I was in a riff state while I was on stage. I was riffing and stuff, and I saw that he was he was leaving right when I got on when, right when I got on stage. He was leaving, and the ex, the exit was right next to the stage. So it's just like it was distracting. So I was just like, "Hey man, how, how are you going to steal my jokes if you're leaving?" And uh, which was wrong. I'm not going to apologize for it, but I will admit that it was wrong for me to do it like that. And uh, I, I I got hit up by somebody who heard me do it, and they wanted more information on it, and I explained it to them, and they're like, oh, it, 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 whatever. So because I didn't think nothing of it uh, that night, I was just like, I did that, it's over, we're done, whatever. I said what I said, he flicked me off, he laughed, and then he left. And... Uh, Again, I didn't, didn't think nothing of it, but it was a, a, it was enough of a thing for somebody to hit me up and say like, "Hey, wh what's what's up? What do you, what were you talking about last night?" So I explained to them, and I was like, "Okay, if this is a thing, let me reach out to this guy. Uh, reach out to this guy, and I uh, I explained the joke. I told him where it came from. I told him how long I've been doing it. Uh, I would tell him like, you know, my my intention behind it and all that stuff." And uh, he said, um, he said that, uh, you know, it's, it's his joke. I was like, cool, whatever. He's like, I'm new. I'm writing new stuff. Tell you what, I won't do that joke anymore. That's what he said. I was like, cool, man. Comedy sucks. Best of luck. Keep at it. Good luck to you. 
you know, see you, see you around, whatever. And we left it at that. And then about a week later, he emails me. He's like, Hey man, I'm, I'm going to keep that joke. Uh, I'm, I'm going to rewrite it, but I'm probably going to be using some of the same words. And I was just, I, I didn't even respond. I was like, what the fuck are we doing? You know, why was that even necessary to tell me? Like, first you say you're not going to do that joke uh, because I explained my, my whole thing and I explained how long I've been doing it. And uh, it should have been it should have been left at that. Again, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's not like a big deal. But it's the fact that he's like, hey, so just to let you know, I've decided that I'm going to do that joke again. I'm going to rewrite it, but I'm going to be using some of the same same words. And I I wasn't gonna pay no mind. I don't I don't care, you know. But um, I feel like I feel like uh, stuff has been like people have been talking about it, you know. Because the other guy he he mentioned he messaged me again. He's like, hey man, so what's going on with with so and so? And I was like, nothing, man, uh, nothing. I was like, I explained my st- my side of it. I told him why it, it's important to uh, stay original. And he didn't see the importance of being original. And it is what it is. I, I, I don't care. And then people have been telling me about like w- bits that I've been doing on stage. It's, it's, it's become a problem because now I'm, I... I do this thing. I don't know if you if you follow me on social media at your homie Pat. I do this thing called um, it's Friday night iights, Saturday night iights, Thursday night iights, and all I'm doing is I'm clipping. I'm, I'm trying not to give the jokes away, but I'm clipping uh, the audience reactions. And if there's a little crowd work, I'll put that in there. Is there something that like just so happens spontaneously? I'll leave that in there. But I'll, I'll make it a minute clip of like a 10 minute set, a 15 minute set, sometimes even a four minute set. I'll clip that into like a, a like a one minute thing, and I'll put some music behind it, um, and um, yeah, just to show because it, it, we could all put up pictures of us holding microphones. But my thing is like, what is the audience doing? That's what I want to know about it, you know. What's the audience doing? Are you connecting with them? Because a freeze, a, a frozen picture, a freeze frame, whatever, yeah, we all look like we're fucking killing it, for sure. We're on stage. There's lights on us. We're holding a microphone. There's people in front of us. But what are we doing? What, what you know? What are we accomplishing anything? And so. I started uh, chopping uh, chopping up the audience reaction so I could like, yo, uh, yeah, I'm doing everything that you're doing, but I'm also proving what the audience is doing. And I've even left some stuff where like uh, something would bomb. I'm completely honest with stuff. Like I don't I don't want it to seem like I only post like the good times, the bad times. I I announce. Like I put a story about me getting my second rejection from the comedy f- uh, festival. You know, and if a bomb's funny from from a uh, outsider perspective, like if a crowd's response is not, you know, a fucking big old pop of laughter, and if it's them, if it's them, like, you know, if a joke bombs from the outside per- perspective, it could look funny. So I'll I'll put that in the in the eyeites, but. Uh, I'm losing my, my thoughts. Um, so that's what I was doing. I, that, I wasn't putting up like bits because I didn't want to give anything away. But, but I've, I've changed that because people would actually tell me, hey, you need to post that, that bit that you just did before somebody steals it. And I'm not saying before somebody steals it from me, but just before like somebody steals it in general, before somebody at the mic, because I'm I'm not gonna say people steal out, outright, but um, maybe I mean you hear this thing over and over again. We're working on it. We're at the same mics, and maybe you're not listening. Maybe you are listening, and then maybe something I'm saying, or maybe something that anybody is saying, goes into your subconscious, uh, 
and then one day you're sitting down you're riding and you're just like boom this just came to me and you're like sugar cancer or dr pepper aids or something and um and you think that just came out of nowhere you know or maybe there's people that that still intentionally and they don't give a fuck so um i did this show uh rough house brewing uh shout out to uh, jake Scholes, schultz Scholes, jack shit i always i always i'm always afraid to mix up the jake and the jack this is Jack Shows that I'm talking about. He runs a good show at uh, Rough House Brewing in San Marcos. It was awesome. It was an awesome fucking setup. Um, but, uh, so anyway, like, uh, good crowd. Good crowd. I had a good time. I was riding the wave. I was in and out of stuff. They were heckling me, but it was funny. And it was a good time. It was a good time. And so I, I posted one bit. You know, because some, so somebody had told me, like, oh, that's that's a f- really funny bit. You should post it before somebody steals it. And I'm like, and now that's in my head. Now I'm just worried that I need to prove, like, because there is no, in my mind, there is no sort of, like, set integrity in, in any of this stuff. A lot of these open micers are dabblers. They're just coming out to, uh, to hang out with friends or just because it's something to do. And they're, they're not really working on their their, their act. They just want to get on stage and they want to make a couple of people laugh. And that's, it's all just like, just for funsies for them. And not that it's not for funsies for me. It's, it's I'm not making, it's not my living. I have a day job, but uh, it's, it's it's serious um, in a way. Uh, it's not financially serious, but uh, the build up to that is, is serious to me. So... When somebody said, you know, like, you got to make a clip of that. You got to post a clip of that before somebody else says it. I'm just like, fuck, dude. Is that what I got to worry about all the time? Is that what I got to do all the time? You know? Um, and so I, I posted that clip. And I'm, and then I was like, and then I got some more footage. Uh, Jack uh, sent me footage of a different angle. He, he used his own camera to record and uh, did, did a different angle, and I just uh, I mashed up my audio with his uh, video, and and I posted the whole fifteen minutes uh, on on YouTube, and uh, just because I, I, it was good, it was good. It was a, I felt it was a strong set with people that have never seen me before, um, and it was a good response. It was a good uh, legitimate. Uh, stranger audience response we could all make our friends laugh that's why we got into this because we could make our friends laugh and that's the first step of becoming a, a, a stand up comedian open mic or whatever and uh, I, I, I on one hand I hate the fact that I had to post that I have to post clips just to say this is mine this is what I came up with you know and so if that happens again, that somebody uh, steals a, a, a punchline or a build up or play on words that I've been using. And 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 I'm not going to lie and say that I don't use uh, like the meme comedy, uh, like the, the meme phrases, phrases that, that we've heard before. But I use those. I don't use those as a punchline. I use as I use those as a bridge to the punchline. Like for instance, we've all heard that like well no nobody in your family runs or nobody in your family is a runner. Uh something like that. You know. That's not a punchline that I'm that I mean, somebody could say that that's the punchline. That's not the punchline for me. It's the bridge to connect uh the build up to the punchline. And I'm just going I'm just going I'm just breaking it down too much. I don't even know if this makes sense to people, but by the way, if you're if you subscribe to the Babaco Core uh, YouTube page, you'll see you'll see the uh, the 15 minute clip. I call it the rough 15, my half a half an hour, and mostly half of me, because it's from the side view, 
and it's only 15 minutes. Uh, you can see that on YouTube. I, I posted all about it. And, uh, yeah, dude. I mean, it, it sucks that, like, I don't want to give it all away online. I want people to come and see me uh, live, you know, experience it live. But I got to worry about um, how am I trademarking any of this stuff if I'm not posting it. If it's not on social media, did it ever happen? You know. Uh, so yeah, it I, it, it sucks. I hate the fact that I'm doing it because I'm, I'm giving up. I'm giving away so much. Like, it's all like comedy is all about the twists, the turns, the surprises, and the jokes that I'm posting. There's still jokes that I'm still doing live. There's still jokes that I'm going to be using, like building up like my half hour my hour, whatever. The uh, Things that I'm posting are still things. It's like it's not a dead joke. But because I become so worried about people, and because it's only happened once. I'm not saying like everybody steals from me. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's a possibility of a very similar play on words that I've been doing for months. I'm not saying that this person outright stole a, stole a joke but now I'm, it's a big concern of mine is that like okay who's saying my stuff at their own shows because it's not above people to do other people's jokes um, and I'm not saying like another comic but if you if you read a meme and then you go on stage and you say that meme you stole from the meme you didn't you didn't create that you just know like oh this is a joke you know like okay oh mexican okay quinceanera slash baby shower heard that a thousand times you know it's a it's a it's a good joke i mean it's a it's a street joke and uh people laugh because it's, it's a funny thing and people laugh because it's familiar 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 to them but also it's not your original joke and you're going on stage and you're putting out these street jokes, these meme jokes, and you're getting the validation, you're getting the laughs, you're getting the reaction, and that's not right. You know? And again, I'm not saying I'm without, like, like I've, I've, I've done stuff, I've thrown out stuff on stage in the moment that wasn't, you know, isn't something that somebody already knows. But it's I, f- I feel it's the way I use it, and, and anybody could justify what they do when they do what they do. But uh, yeah, all right. So yeah, so check out uh, fifteen minutes, my half a half an hour, and mostly half of me uh, on the YouTube, uh, BibleCodeCore dot com at your homie Pat, all the good stuff. Let me end on a good note. I don't, I'm not a big, uh, <laughs> I'm not a big uh, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift fan. But I do like, I've always liked that song, uh, Shake It Off. It has a good, I, I love the the drum beat on that. It's good stuff, you know, and then the just the cadence, her voice, all that stuff. It's good. I don't know any of her other songs. That's the only song that I know from her. Uh, I know of her. I don't know anything about her, though. Anyway. Uh, while looking up a song that I wanted to use to post with the story, I found that there was another band that covered uh, the, t- the Taylor Swift uh, Shake It Off. And it's a band called um, Screaming Females. And they're out of New Jersey. And they're amazing. I love their cover of it. I can't stop listening to it. Uh, listening to it. And uh, I just found this band because they did a cover of uh, the Taylor Swift song. And then they also did a, a, a cover of um, uh, Cheryl Crow's If It Makes You Happy, uh, which is good. The, the guitarist, singer, uh, Marissa... Oh, I'm going to mess up the name. Let me look it up. Uh, Screaming Females is the band Marissa Pasternoster. P-A-T-E-R-N-O-S 
T E R Marissa Pat Paternoster, uh, who is the guitar player, uh, singer for Screaming Females, is is amazing, dude. Her her guitar work is fucking fucking amazing. I like what she does with her voice. Uh, check it out, dude. It the, the finding this band and they're like the the worst thing that I hate is when I find a band and then I look them up and they've already been broken up, like they're done. It's a done thing. I hate finding new bands or new bands to me that have uh, since uh, broken up. But uh, they're still an active band out of uh, New Jersey. They've been a band since 2005. And uh, they, they great. Great music. It's fucking fun. Bass player is awesome. The drummer is what the drummer is, you know, but I'm, I'm biased on that. But I think he's left-handed. Uh, I saw one video and he, he did, although he plays right, which is like, if you're a left-handed drummer play and that playing with a, like a right-handed drummer set, uh, you're, you're cool. I appreciate that. But, uh, that's neither here nor there. I don't, I don't know if he is a left-handed, but he does kind of have left-handed drummer tendencies. But yeah, that, that band, uh, uh, screaming females, so amazing did a did, did a uh, an amazing cover of uh, shake it off to the point where like it, if i ever get an opportunity to pick my music my intro music i'm going with uh called dibs on um uh, screaming females shake it off it's good it's good um what else did i want to talk about oh finally had, uh I'm only seeing my therapist once a month now, which is fine, you know, and, uh, had my session this past Saturday, which was, uh, which was cool. You know, all we usually to talk about, I mean, I, the most, the majority of the things that we talk about is comedy, you know, uh, cause he, you know, just for whatever reason, that, that's what we do. It helps me, you know. I talk about my process. I talk about what I go through. I talk about all this stuff that uh, that that is very serious to me. That but might might not be very serious to somebody else, you know. And, and I hate I hate coming off uh, like to like comedy buddies of mine and like getting deep with 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 it. And they're just like, dude, just fucking chill. We're open micers, which they wouldn't be wrong in saying that. But at the same time, just like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But. So it's nice that I get to talk to my therapist, not only about like the the personal struggles that I that I deal with outside of comedy, but with the struggles uh, personally and otherwise that I deal with in comedy. Uh, so it was good. We j we just caught up about that, and uh, you know, but he's never seen my, he's never seen my stand up before, you know, never shared it with him, and so since I posted that clip, the rough fifteen. Uh, my half a half an hour and mostly the half of me um, I, I sent it to him I, I texted to him I was like hey can, if you're interested I just posted this if you just want to see what I want, wanted to do and uh, I'm not going to lie I was fishing for uh, his reaction I, I, I really wanted to know you know because we talk about this so much we talk about comedy so much it's such a big part of uh uh, my relationship with my therapist and and, and and all this stuff, you know, and uh, and he had a lot of positive feedback, man, and it, it felt good. It was like cool, man. Like, can I call you daddy now? Uh, but um, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. But um, and that would be weird. Like he's like five years older than me, <laughs> so uh, we're not there yet. Working on it, you know working on it but uh no dude uh so 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 that's nice man i'm not gonna lie and say I, I put the clips out just for uh the protection of the jokes uh which sounds so stupid sounds so stupid when i said that to protect the integrity of my fart and dick and fat jokes but uh i also put it out there to get the positive response positive reactions that uh 
and I, and I think the thing is too because like i was for 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 a while like i was busy i was so busy that i didn't need there wasn't breaks between getting a a feedback on what i was doing but because i had um like I haven't done, I haven't been on stage since Thursday. Besides Mike's, I'm not going to have anything until Saturday, you know, the 21st. Um, so I'm just like, damn, dude, like, how am I going to scratch this itch? How am I going to get the validation? How am I going to, you know, how would I know if people like me? And I think that that is also a reason why I posted the clips, you know. Uh, and maybe people that that are the friends of mine that are out of town, or friends of mine that don't go to comedy shows, wouldn't go to comedy shows, but kind of just want to see what I do. I put I put it out there for them too, you know. Uh, but yeah, dude. I think that was I think that's the episode. I'm glad I did this, man. I know it's it's bright out. It's still daytime. It's like four o'clock. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that my wife gets home early and so we could go to the pool and drink beers and uh I got I got to take a I haven't eaten today and I I need to take a shower because I I don't I, I I always shower before I go into the pool because I respect the people that I'm going to pee around you know so I got to take a shower and possibly get something to eat but cool, man. Uh, thank you for checking out the Pat Out of Hill podcast, uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and TikTok, and OnlyFans at your homie Pat, uh, at your homie Pat, and then uh, BobaCoolCore.com for um, all the updated show information. Uh, check out my calendar if you see any available dates because I, I put everything on there. If you see any available dates and you have a show for me, uh, guest spot what have you um yeah hit me up dude let's make it happen i got a lot of stuff that i'm working on uh i I realize that i'm 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 almost at uh at 45 minutes i almost have a 45 minute set and i think that would uh constitute me i don't did i say that right constitute me that would make me probably be considered as a Headliner. I've never done a headliner set before. I've only been doing this for four years. You know, if you've done it, uh, whatever. But, uh, yeah. Building. I'm building an act. I'm building on something. And, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, thanks for thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for uh, watching or listening to the Pat Out of Hill podcast. Uh, this is uh, Cosmo. And uh, uh, hopefully you're doing good. I'll check back with you uh, next week. And, uh, yeah, peace.